Have you ever been in a thunderstorm that was so, so bad that you thought um, that your journey on this world would end? The weather in Germany is usually quite moderate, but sometimes it makes up for its good behavior. And then it feels like an angry deity is throwing around thunderbolts, and often they hit old trees and split them apart with a force that was unknown to people before humans started experimenting with black powder. Today is Reformation Sunday. When we talk about the weather, we have also to talk about Martin Luther. But Martin Luther was not a meteorologist. Martin Luther was studying law. His dad had gotten rich with mining and his son would add some legal power to the business. In Luther's time, there was no division between the secular and the religious realm. The notion of a secular side of life, that is an idea that emerged out of the Enlightenment 200 years later. The people in Martin Luther's time, they saw a demon lurking in every nook and every cranny. The heavens were full of angels and the hell was full of devils and they vied for the soul of humans. There was an epic battle going on, the battle between good and evil. Most of us have very little doubt on which side we're on. We're the good guys, of course. Ronald Reagan's son is an atheist who made a TV spot against religion. And he signs off with the words, Ron Reagan, not afraid to go to hell. And in his own way, he proclaims the main purpose of the Reformation, to take the fear out of the human heart. But this notion of not being afraid to go to hell, Ron Reagan has in common with the vast majority of the Christian world. I actually know nobody who really feels they might go to hell. Fire and brimstone preachers, they don't fear hell. Hell is something for the other guys who don't believe like I do or who do not believe at all like Ron Reagan. They, whoever they may be, they will go to hell. I don't go to heaven because I believe right, behave right, I hate the right people. But for young Martin Luther, that was fundamentally different. Fear of hell for him was in a reality, not for the other guys, but for himself. And when he was caught in that thunderstorm one day, he thought the devil himself was coming for him. That must have been quite a thunderstorm. It made Martin Luther throw away his promising legal career and make a vow to enter a monastery. Medieval people fear damnation, hell, and demons. They are superstitious and their lives are short and they are incredibly hard. For instance, having a baby is a major life risk for every woman. And most women go through that experience every year. They have 10 and more children and they will bury a sizable number of them. Many of their children will die as infants. Medical care is worse than it was in the Roman Empire. For instance, Roman surgeons could operate a cataract. They were able to open the eye and remove the lens. And then the patient continued to live. In Luther's time, there's a good chance that when you end up with a cataract, you think a witch has cursed you. Everything under the sun is infused with a great battle of good versus evil. Everything is closely connected with the supernatural, either the demonic or the angelic. Religious observance is as natural and as necessary as breathing is. Maybe you remember how you were afraid of the dark as a child because monsters are hiding under your bed or in the closet. That's how I imagine daily life must have felt in that time. There was always a demon lurking who was out to tempt you and to get you to sin. And if you sinned, then God would punish you. 
And the people were sincerely and really deeply afraid of that. But if you go into a monastery, then you're on a highway to heaven. Being a monk gave you an enormous head start because all the holy things a monk uh, does all day rack up quite a bit of credit on the eternal ledger that sets up some of the sins committed along the way. What the reformers later called works righteousness was the common understanding of salvation. Jesus died on the cross so you could save yourself. Luther became a monk. And that should have been the end of his story. He was supposed to live a monk's life for the next 40 years or so. And then he would enter into God's embrace because of all the, the, the years of holy living made up for the sins he committed. Maybe a bit of purgatory for the most grievous sins. However, I'm not sure what they could be uh, given the fact he was in a monastery. He should have left, lived a peaceful and predictable life. But he didn't. If he was afraid of God outside of the monastery, it got worse on the inside. Now he tried to get on good, good side all day long, but he thought all he did was adding sin on sin. He was in the end not able to love God because he was so afraid of God. But, you know, the catch is if you love God because you are afraid of God, you are committing blasphemy because you need to love God because of God is being God. So it's either that pure love or it's hell. Nothing in between. And that fear, that drove Martin Luther almost insane. Maybe it drove him insane. Today we would consider medication when we came across a case like Luther. But they didn't have medication. All they had was a university in Wittenberg. And there they sent him basically for Bible study. And what follows out of that Bible study is a reformation. Serious Bible study can kill the nicest and most convenient church doctrine. That's why so many people avoid reading the Bible like the devil avoids holy water. They believe in the Bible, but they don't read it. Do as I say or go to hell is a concept that is really easy to grasp. In contrast, the biblical witness is complex, contradictory, and confusing. And it usually brings people to the point where you have the feeling that God is calling you to change your life. But humans often prefer the devil they know over their Christ. They could find if they took the risk of being confused, perplexed, and bewildered. The starting point of the Reformation was fear. The purpose of the Reformation is to remove this fear from the human heart. Humans do not need to fear God. God loves humans. God's love, of course, is not blind. God does not condone unhealthy or unethical choices. But God does not remove God's love from anyone. That's the fundamental difference between God and a fallen human being like us. Yes, we are able to love, but our love can get lost or can be destroyed. God's love is never lost or destroyed. God always draws near to us and God tries to love us back onto the path of righteousness. And when we reject and curse God, then God doesn't get angry and vows revenge. That would be what we do. God continues to love until that love changes a heart. God's never-ending love is persistent like the Colorado River who carved the Great Canyon into the landscape. God's constant love 
erodes the power of sin. And that love is the only thing that gives us a glimpse of salvation. Only God's love gives us the power to turn our lives toward God and disciple along the path of Christ as best as we can. Fear only leads to despair, to hate, and to wars in which we seek to destroy those who believe differently or not at all. Christ died for us. And Martin Luther said in the nut house for us. So let us take their gifts as the blessings that they are. God's grace is upon us. God's grace is a free gift that must not be earned, that, that cannot be earned, because if you have to earn something, that something is neither free nor a gift. It's payment for services rendered. But God didn't hire us to do a job. God created us because God loves living things. A gift is always free. That's the very definition of a gift, that a gift is free. A gift is given without the expectation of return. Gifts are given to build and deepen a relationship. They express love, appreciation, and genuine goodwill toward the recipient of the gift. That the reformers feel the need to emphasize the free part, free gift, free, 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 points to the importance that theological insight had for them and for us. God's grace is for us because God loves human beings. That's it. End of story. God loves us no matter what. That's the Reformation in a nutshell. Amen.